spine emergencies. Here is an example of spine emergencies. We start with the transverse atlantal ligament rupture. On the right, you can see a top view of C1 and C2 vertebrae. And on the left side, you can see a lateral view of C1 and C2 vertebrae. You can see also the odontoid process, and you can see the transverse ligament and the spinal cord. The atlantodental interval normally is less than 3 mm. If the transverse ligament rupture, you can see that the spine becomes translationally unstable in the sagittal plane and the odontoid will be displaced posteriorly. The ADI will increase more than 3 mm and the spinal cord area will be narrowed and you may get spinal cord compromise as the odontoid process moves posteriorly towards the spinal cord. This rupture of the transverse ligament is usually apparent on the x-rays or CT scan as the odontoid moves posteriorly and the ADI increase, compromising the spinal cord. If the condition is not diagnosed properly, it can result in a spinal cord compression, respiratory arrest, and catastrophic outcome. This condition usually requires surgery because ligaments don't heal. They need to be fused. So it probably will require posterior atlantoaxial arthrodesis. Another condition called the bilateral cervical facet dislocation. Facet dislocations of the cervical spine can be unilateral facet dislocation or bilateral facet dislocation. In the unilateral facet dislocation, the displacement of the vertebrae is less than 50% of the cervical body width and it may need surgery. Bilateral facet dislocation is more serious. The displacement of the vertebrae is greater than 50% of the vertebral body width. You need to obtain preoperative MRI to rule out disc herniation associated with facet dislocations. In the unilateral, you'll have rotational component and in bilateral, you have displacement of the vertebrae. Number three, spinal cord compression. Spinal cord compression is more common with cervical spine injuries and thoracic spine injuries. Bone within the canal increase the risk of spinal cord compression and injury. Neurogenic shock resulting from a spinal cord injury may complicate resuscitation of the patient and should be differentiated from hypovolemic shock. Look for hypotension and bradycardia in neurogenic shock. Treatment. Emergency management involves resuscitation and hemodynamic stabilization of the patient with a concurrent, adequate, and frequent neurologic examination. The definitive treatment is usually stabilization of the unstable spinal injuries. Coda equina syndrome. Here is a picture of central disc herniation compressing the coda equina. The coda equina syndrome results from injury to the lumbosacral nerve roots within the spinal canal. It presents with involvement of the bladder, bowel, and the lower limbs, and usually results from fractures or central disc herniation. Central disc herniation or bony fragments result in compression of the nerve roots. Early diagnosis of the condition is important for eventual improvement on the outcome. Treatment, urgent decompression by removal of the central disc herniation or decompression and destabilization of the fracture.
Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.